Do you like H.R. Geiger? You know, the artist that created the infamous Alien and countless other works I definitely can't show on YouTube. His art is easily some of the most recognizable dark horror sci-fi ever created. I've even personally been to his museum, which features some of the most truly depraved stuff nestled in an oddly idyllic Swiss town. If you're really feeling brave, try searching for some of his adult art on Google. Compared to his darker work, the Alien movies could almost pass as family friendly. But like I was saying before, do you really like H.R. Geiger? Do you want to play a game based on his work? Well, then I'd recommend Alien Isolation. It's easily one of the best survival horror games out there. But you saw the title of this video, so clearly I'm not here to rant about Alien Isolation. You wanted to see a game that's fully immersed in Geiger, not just featuring one of his monsters. Perhaps you wanted to explore some dark, twisted sci-fi worlds, solving puzzles and encountering strange creatures along the way. You want to play a game that channels Geiger's work to the fullest degree, like no project ever before it. Well, lucky for you, both the Dark Seed and Tormentum series have all those things I just listed, and those games came out almost 30 years ago. But really, I know you clicked on this video to hear about Scorn, which is often touted as the first true Geiger game. I just felt like mentioning all those other games to really emphasize that this is not the once in a lifetime game some people are claiming it to be. Is the art amazingly good, especially for an indie team? Absolutely. If you have a quick look at the reviews, almost everyone has great things to say about the visuals. It's creepy, grotesque, foreboding, and sometimes even strangely beautiful. What can I really say about the art that a thousand other people aren't already praising? It's clearly the selling point of the game, and they definitely nailed it. Unfortunately, we're talking about a video game here, not just a movie. In order to progress through the game to experience some more of those juicy visuals, you have to actually suffer through playing it. And it's not even like it's a walking simulator where you could just take it all in at your own pace. No, this game features a handful of gameplay elements that almost universally detract from the experience. But before I talk about game design, I should mention the story or perhaps the lack of a traditional one. The game quite literally throws you down a hole at the start into some alien hellscape. You wander around doing things for seemingly no reason other than to find a way forward. Eventually some alien attaches itself to your body, slowly consuming you as you move on. I guess your goal at this point is to try and remove the alien and escape, but that's about as far as it goes. There's no dialogue, voiceover, or text in the game. There also aren't any notes or logs to expand the story, unlike most other horror games. You wander through areas and interact with things just to get to the next area so you can do it all over again. The nice art is your only reason to move forward, but that's simply an extrinsic motivation. The game doesn't really give you any story reason to move on. I guess you can boil the entire game down to don't die here, which is potentially the barest story imaginable. But that's about as much as I can say about the story, so let's get down to the real meat of the video. How does it feel to play? Well, it's not great. It's not like it's buggy or anything, it just isn't very fun. Oh yeah, except for that part where my game completely broke when I got to Act 5. Part of the area never loaded in, and this issue persisted through reloads. I slogged through almost the entire game just to get turned away at the end, so I had to watch the final section on YouTube instead. I reached out to the devs, but I never received a response. But that's a bug that could be fixed in the future. So what about the stuff that isn't going to change, like the puzzles? There's a few puzzles scattered around each level to give you something to do, or perhaps to pad out the game length a little bit more. They're definitely harder than the standard survival horror puzzles, but that doesn't make them any more interesting to solve. In fact, the very first major puzzle in the game is a bland Sokoban puzzle. You know, that move the rock segment that's been in almost every puzzle game ever made? Yeah. Sure, it takes a few minutes to do, but I didn't enjoy a second of it. Most of the other puzzles are just like this, usually involving somewhat convoluted solutions so you can't blaze through them in 30 seconds. Instead, the game drops all atmosphere and tension to make you solve outdated puzzles for minutes on end. The only joy I got from the puzzles was thinking that I might get 10 more minutes of nice visuals before having to deal with yet another puzzle. Like I said, lacking any motivation beyond the art makes the thought of trudging through these puzzles a real tough bargain. But then again, I've never been a huge fan of hardcore puzzle games. I mean, Mist and Riven are definitely not up my alley. 
Sure, I can get through them, but I'm not having any fun in the process. On the other hand, I don't mind the small puzzles in games like Resident Evil or Silent Hill. As long as they're not killing the horror experience for minutes on end, I think they're fine when used sparingly. But wait, the gameplay goes beyond just puzzles. There's also combat. That could be good, right? No. No it is not. If you were hoping that Scorn was some sort of indie doom, you'd be sorely mistaken. I wouldn't even blame you for thinking that though. If you look at almost any of the gameplay trailers, you can see a gun dead center on the screen, often mixed with a bit of combat. Despite them saying this was more of a puzzle game, their marketing didn't quite land correctly with the majority of players. Don't believe me? Go take a peek at the user reviews. You'll find a lot of people focusing on the combat like it was a core feature, because that's what they saw in the videos. Having read up on the game beforehand, I didn't expect much when it came to the combat, but even then I was still disappointed. I'm sure the developers would try to tell you it's intentionally slow, dangerous, and methodical, but instead it just comes across as clunky, poorly designed, and an overall bad experience. I might have even enjoyed the game better if they removed the combat altogether. Everything in the game is slow, especially the heavy usage of animations for all sorts of things. On the other hand, monsters in the game can attack pretty quickly, and rarely miss. Even worse, the common spitting monsters can attack you from beyond your effective range. All of your weapons are a variation of shotguns that take many seconds to fully aim. So half the time you're stuck running up to them and eating some damage while waiting for the reticle to shrink. And there aren't even any stealth mechanics that would allow you to get past enemies without fighting. Given how dangerous and hostile the world is supposed to be, you'd think they would at least give you the option to sneak. It's almost always better to just run by enemies, given that there's no real reason to fight them. Unfortunately, quite a lot of scoring is spent in very tight corridors where enemies block the entire path. You can sometimes squeeze by, while other times you get trapped against a wall and stun locked to death. Oh, and good luck ever reloading or switching weapons in combat. The animations are so painfully slow that the only real option you have is to run back to the previous room to do anything. I mean, just look at me switching weapons here. The game forces you to watch the inventory opening animation, slowly tab over to your desired weapon, select it, wait for the inventory to close, and then wait even longer for the weapon to be put together. And it only gets worse if the weapon you want is more than one button away in the inventory. Everything in the game is like this. Sure, they made some neat animations, and they're cool to see once or twice. But once you've swapped a few weapons and interacted with countless objects, the animations become a huge annoyance. Everything about this game feels like it was made by a team of very skilled artists with no game designers in sight. Or maybe there were designers, but the CEO was an artist who overrode all their ideas. From the worst aspects, like poor combat and uninteresting puzzles, to the minor pains of endless animations, it really feels like Scorn could have used another game designer or two to help smooth things out. I really hate to compare anything to the travesty that was Agony, but there are a lot of similarities here. Obviously, Scorn is much higher quality than Agony, but it's still a hellscape game highly focused on visuals and shocking content while heavily neglecting the gameplay aspects. If the art side of this game was on the same level as the gameplay, we'd never be talking about it in the first place. But hey, those visuals, huh? I will say I did enjoy that part, but almost everything else about it felt like a slog. I almost never say this, but I think Scorn is best experienced by just watching someone else play it. Watch a long play video, or check out your favorite streamer going through it. It's fully linear, so you're not missing out on exploration or anything. You even get the benefit of skipping the puzzles, something I would have gladly done in-game if I could. So anyways, that's Scorn for you. Looks good, feels bad. If you're a hardcore fan of both Geiger and Myst, maybe this is the game for you. I could see it gaining a cult following given some time. But for anyone else, I don't recommend playing it, unless you like suffering for some art. Which, hey, might be pretty on brand after all. Like I said before, Alien Isolation is my recommendation for that survival horror Geiger experience. If you'd like to check out more of my videos, you can subscore to my Scorn Hub channel. Thanks a lot for sticking around until the end folks, I hope to see you all in the next one.